Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. From Mark chapter 6. And when he got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplace and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we could use a day just like that day, couldn't we? We could have it a day where Christ comes back and we bring out our sick and they could just touch the hem of his garment and they would be healed. Wouldn't you like a day like that in your life? I know I would, where you're just healed like that. And I'm not talking for myself. I think we all know somebody in our lives who could use that healing. Right now, I have been visiting a lot this week, Mr. and Mrs. Butzine, an elderly members of our church. Some of you may know them, and maybe you not. Ken has gone in the hospice. Darlene has become completely engulfed with, um, with um, Alzheimer's. Boy, if Christ was walking around in the marketplace, those are the two people I would bring. Those are the people I want to touch. And you could have your people too there. And that's the point. They brought everybody. Everybody came. So much so that there was no conversation. He just was walking. They were touching and they were healed. They were sick and they know who to go to. Yesterday, I was at Lowe's. I'd spend too much time and money at Lowe's. <laughs> they have me as the number one employee slash customer right now, I think. But I am there, and there's a new thing that I did not know, but now you're allowed to bring dogs into stores. Have you noticed this? I didn't know you could do this. This is fascinating to me. In fact, I saw a puppy in a golf or in one of the carts with a pillow laying there. I thought, wow, that puppy's living the life. But they had in the section we were at one of these big dogs, an older big dog. He was big, but he looked as lazy as lazy. You know the dog where when it walks, it looks like it's putting out too much effort? That kind of dog. Where you know that dog wouldn't hurt anybody. But mom and dad were standing there with the people, the dog standing on the other side in that aisle, and I was watching this little girl because she was the cutest little thing. And I locked her. She looked right at that dog who would not hurt anything. But that dog is literally twice her body weight. Easy. And then I watched her slowly walk over, get between the dog and her mother, and then grab her mother's hand. And that was that. She was fine. She knew exactly where to go and whose hand to grab to make sure she's safe from the dog. And it wasn't dad, by the way. You noticed that. It was mom. In your life, do you know who to go to? Do you know whose hand to grab? Do you know who's going to rescue you when you need it the most? Do you know the man I'm talking about? I think you do. Now, I'm not trying to make a joke of this in any way, so please do not take it as such. But I'll start off this with this statement. I, right now, do not take and have never taken chemotherapy. Why do you think that's the case? What, what was that? Okay, you're close. I, it's not that I don't have cancer. I've not been diagnosed with cancer. I don't think I have cancer. I feel as healthy as an ox. However, it could be riddling my body right now as we speak, and it has not manifested itself. That's possible. We've all seen that. And so what I'm saying to you is until I'm diagnosed, I'm not taking that medicine, nor should I. That is the way of the world. That's normal, right? Why would I take medicine that's that violent, in fact, if I'm not diagnosed with the cancer? However, if I was diagnosed with cancer and a doctor say this is the course of action, guess what I would be taking? The chemotherapy. 
My point is this. Because you think and because other people think they don't need Christ doesn't mean they don't need Christ. They're unaware of what is corrupting their body. They're unaware of their sin and they are unaware or at least they like to pretend like death isn't a part of the life of all people. They like to avoid the fact of death. If you don't know you're spiritually sick, if you don't know that sin has riddled your body, then you do not need or understand, you do not think or understand the need for Jesus. Not for spiritual matters and not for physical matters. But all people are sick. All people are born sick with sin. And all people have physical issues as well. And then there's the question of whom do you go to to fix it? Because once you find out you have that cancer, as much as you don't want that chemotherapy, you want that cancer gone. And once you are aware through the law that you have broken the commandments of God and that you've fallen short and that you're in real trouble, then all of a sudden, all you can think about is how can I get saved? How can I get forgiven? What's this Jesus really offering? He's not offering good ways to live this life. He's offering forgiveness of sins. Put it another way. My first mentor as a pastor was Pastor Boo Cup in North Dakota. He was my circuit visitor. He was my PALS coordinator. PALS is a, or, a three year program we do for men who have or, been ordained so that they are still getting mentoring and help. And Pastor Boo Cup was an excellent mentor in every way and a very healthy man. However, he had a very very severe case of diabetes his entire life. And he knew it. He had one of those pumps on the side. That's serious. And I know it very well. So one day, we were driving around in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and I look over as he is driving, and he is starting to slump. I know exactly what's going on, because I know Pastor Boo Cup that well. And I said to him, <clears throat> Mark, would you like to have a little stop and get a little something to eat? And he goes, oh, no. And he pulls out one of those uh, sugar or glucose tablets, pops it in his mouth, and he was right as rain almost immediately. He was sick. He was endangered. I was in danger, too. He was driving. He was the driver. But... He knew exactly what to go, exactly what to do, and it helped him exactly at that moment. We Christians have given up our pride completely. When we know we need help, we know exactly whom to go to and how to get it and what's going to happen because of it. And that's Christ Jesus himself. He heals us from the things of this world. He heals us from our own sinfulness. He heals us even from death. Mark did not argue with me that he should or should not take that glucose tablet. Pastor Boo Cup knew he could trust me, and I trusted him. In the same way, the church says the same thing. Trust us. Go to Christ. Go to Jesus. That is the man who will help you. We are not people of pride and arrogance in the church. Heck, I think we're closer to begging than pride. Lord, help us. Christ, help us. Lord, help us. And the surprise is this. He does. Every time. Every time. That, remember, he's walking down the market. And it wasn't like people weren't touching the garment and go, well, I'm healed. I'm not. I'm healed. Let me try that again. Maybe I need a conversation. Those who go to Christ receive Christ. Always. The humble are never turned away. But we could use a day like our text, couldn't we? A day to heal. A day to experience the love of Christ in such a real way. And yes, even the forgiveness of sins, to hear them out of his mouth, is a powerful thing. Would you like that day? Would you like that day in your life? He comes to us. He walked across water 
and ground and land and three years of ministry. And he went up onto a cross and he died there. And then he came down off the cross, buried, rose from the dead and ascends into heaven. And now he is there doing exactly the work we've asked him to do. There's a day coming in your life where you will no longer need a doctor. Period. You will no longer need a funeral director. Period. You will no longer need a pastor. Period. I like that I'm working my way out of a job. <laughs> when you die, you will live. And on that day, you will experience that same kind of healing too both physical and spiritual. The days are coming. You get one of these days too. I promise it's coming. And why do you think they sing in heaven? It's not because they have to. It's because they can't stop thanking Jesus for all that Christ has done for you and I today and what Christ will do for us on that day when, he, when we touch his garment and he heals us forever. You will be completely healed. The day is coming. Rejoice in it. For Christ is the Christ of the living, not the dead. So Jesus is our Lord and the saints beyond us, Lord. So this uh, week as I do ministry, as I go to the butt scenes and I pray over them and pray over Ken in particular, I pray a simple prayer. Lord, show your love to Ken. Give him life again. And you know what? Christ is going to answer that prayer soon. And we will rejoice. Sadly, but still rejoice. I don't know if you get the point of my preaching sometimes. Christ is about life, blessings, forgiveness, love. If those aren't your words when you think of Jesus, listen, he didn't come here to condemn you. He came here to save us and to give us life. I'll keep banging on about this for a while, folks. I need to know that all of you 100% are grasping this. And then once I'm done, once you've grasped it completely, I can retire. May God bless you. May the life that God give you, gave you now be full of joy and great vocational work for him. And may the day come where you too will rejoice when you receive the healing like all those people did in our text. Trust in our Lord always. Amen.